Imagine the following scenario. You're building a game, and in it you have an AI-controlled enemy. You want this enemy to fire at some targets. Maybe the target is moving, and you want to fire slightly ahead of where it's going. Or maybe you'd like to throw something at it in an arc. Today, I'm excited to introduce to you a solution that can help with all sorts of projectile prediction, targeting or aiming scenarios in Unity 3D. We're not stopping at the basics this time. We're going to dive into three different targeting scripts with different applications at different skill levels that can work in multiple scenarios. Starting at the beginner level of rotating towards something and firing projectiles straight at that target, we have the simple targeting script. You click somewhere, our archer rotates towards that target and fires an arrow straight at it. This is great for simple turrets or enemies shooting at the player. Then there's the tracking targeting script. This class predicts the movement of a rigid body target and the time it will take for the arrow to get there ahead of time, ensuring a direct hit even as our targets are moving through the scene. And finally, advanced targeting a kinematic formula-based script that calculates trajectories with near-perfect precision. By supplying this script with just two points in space, it is going to calculate an arc for our projectile, the force necessary, the time it will take for the arrow to hit, and several other variables. This can then be used to fire a projectile with great accuracy, while accounting for gravity and keeping a realistic arc. Just click anywhere in the scene, and this script will figure out exactly what it needs to do in order to get an arrow to that location. This is all different from my last video on trajectory prediction. In that video, we calculated where a projectile would land given a set of known variables. We were controlling the variables and the turret that fired. But this time, we only know point A and point B, and we would like our script to handle how to get from one to the other. Again, I believe this could be great for AI opponents and turrets in games, where you want them to track and fire at targets, and I hope you'll find this interesting and useful. Welcome back developers, I am back after a long summer vacation. Before I left, I was asked by a viewer about this very topic, and the idea has been with me since. The project has grown since I started on it, and there are now 12 different classes, and some are required by each of the three targeting scripts. As a side note, I wanted to avoid using inheritance, so there is some duplication between the scripts. As usual, the entire project is available to be viewed and downloaded through my GitHub page. If you have any thoughts or questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer. Also, if you have any critique or ideas for improvement, I'd love to hear it. Anyway, let's dive into the project. In our scene, we have our archer, the most accurate one in all the labs, standing atop a cliff. Surrounding him are archery targets, both stationary and moving, or more like falling. We can look around using the WASD keys. We can zoom with the mouse wheel and rotate with Q and E. The only other controls we have are left and right clicking with the mouse. Depending on which targeting script we are using, left click will predict and right click will launch an arrow. On the archer is the point targeting class that lets us click anywhere in the scene to target that spot. It has three values for us to play with. Minimum distance is the closest distance to the archer that we can target. Maximum distance is the furthest away and max delay is the reload time. In order not to fire too rapidly and accidentally have arrows hitting one another, we need a small delay. On the Archer, we also have a UI Visualizer class to help write data to the UI and set some positions on the line render. It doesn't have to be on the Archer itself, of course, but for a tutorial like this, I think it makes sense to have scripts that rely on each other on the same object. Line resolution is the number of points on the line render. This only applies to the advanced targeting script, as the other scripts simply make a straight line. Something worth pointing out here is how the arrow may look like it's traveling below the line. The arrow has a script that rotates it as it travels through the air, which changes its rotation and may make it appear to not be completely along the white line. The arrow also has a box collider, where the upper corner may strike a target first, causing it to stop. Combined with the rotation, this can sometimes give the impression that the arrow missed its mark. It probably did it. Also, also, it currently does not calculate for drag or increased mass. Leave the mass at 1 and drag at 0 for best results. Another script that gets passed around a lot is the launch data struct. It's mostly used on the advanced targeting script, even though the other two simpler scripts are also required to return it as data. They are bound as part of the interface to use certain methods. 
all three scripts make use of the Archer interface. If you are not familiar with interfaces, they are essentially a contract forcing the class to have certain public methods. In this case, we are required to have both a calculate and a launch method. Let's dig into the targeting scripts one by one. Starting with the simplest, the simple targeting script. We can increase or decrease the power that our arrow will be fired with. We also get a choice of arrow type. In this case, we want the one without gravity. This would also work great with bullets or any other type of projectile that just moves in a single direction. Once the mouse button is pressed, the archer is rotated with the rotate archer method. This has no bearing on how the arrow will travel, but it's just a visual change. This method calculates the direction vector from our archer's position to the target position. Now you may notice something here, and that is the direction to method, as well as the dot with method. These are part of an extension class that add custom functionality to Unity's own Vector3 class. I believe I got these from a Jason Wyman video years ago. It's super helpful, and I'll go over them more later on. The launch arrow method. This method calculates the direction vector from the start position to the target position. It instantiates a new arrow game object at the start position and applies a force to it in the direction of the calculated vector, multiplied by the predefined power value. This essentially launches the arrow towards the target. Overall, Simple Targeting class provides a basic approach to hitting a target with an arrow or any other projectile. Next up is the Tracking Targeting class. It also has a power variable for us to use, and also a pause button. This will pause the game, the frame that we fired, so we can better see what it's doing. If we do utilize the Pause Debug option, the game will pause at the moment we click a target, and the red line will appear in the editor. We can now see the difference between where the target is and where we have to aim. The red line points straight at where we clicked, and the white line pointing towards where our archer will have to aim. This script introduces a more sophisticated approach to targeting by predicting the movement of a moving target and launching an arrow to intercept it. Just like before, in the calculate method, our archer is rotated and the arrow is launched right after. We utilize some of the same functionality as the previous script, rotating our archer, returning launch data, and so on. This method estimates the direction vector towards the anticipated position of the moving target at the moment the arrow reaches it. Here we calculate the estimated time until the arrow hits the target's expected position. It uses the difference between the estimated velocity of the target and the target's actual velocity to calculate this time. Overall, the Tracking Targeting class showcases an advanced targeting approach, where the arrow's trajectory is predicted to intercept a moving target. The Anticipate Velocity method plays a critical role in this process, estimating where the moving target will be when the arrow arrives. This adds a layer of complexity to the mechanics. Unfortunately, it's not perfect, as it cannot process acceleration or deacceleration. To do this, you would have to read the target's movement over time, which we don't do in this example, as we are just getting the position when the user clicks a mouse button. We should always hit the target if it's moving at the same velocity, but if it's accelerating or deaccelerating, we might miss. Still, this is perfectly acceptable for most games, probably to have an AI opponent fire in anticipation of where the player is going and not just where it is at the moment. And finally, the Advanced Targeting class, which represents the most complex and feature-rich targeting script among the three. There is no power value in the inspector this time, as we don't have any control over it. We only have a max height range and a toggle for random. Again, we rotate the archer and call this Calculate Launch method, which is totally bloated at the moment. But if I highlight the center, and maybe spaced them out a bit, we can see that it sets the height, calculates the time, and the velocity. This method calculates and returns the time it takes for an arrow to reach the target, based on the given parameters. The height difference between the start and target position, height, the gravitational acceleration, gravity, and the vertical distance between the start and the target position, distance y. The equation used here is derived from the kinematic equations of projectile motion. This method randomizes the arc height. It sets a minimum value that's either a small offset from the relative height or a minimum value of 0.1. A maximum value is determined based on whether the relative height is positive or not. The randomized height is then calculated using either a random range or a lerp between minimum and maximum value. 
This height value is probably the most interesting part of this entire script. Apart from the start and end positions, it is the only variable which we have any control over. It's relative to the start position and is both the height offset from the start position and the maximum point that our arc will reach. It can never be lower than the target's position. By increasing the max height range, we allow the arc to be higher, while a lower value will fire the arrow more directly at the target. The class adjusts the power and everything else entirely on its own. The final velocity vector is calculated by adding the vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity towards the target. The resulting velocity is then adjusted based on the direction of gravity. All of the math here are from the kinematic formulas. I will leave links in the description down below to additional reading. I hope you take a moment to try this out for yourself. Play with the different values and scripts, and if you do find any issues or have questions, please do let me know. All in all, I think these three scripts give you a lot to work with. You could replace and use parts from the different scripts at different times, switch them out at runtime, or just experiment with them. The data classes are a great way to send variables between scripts. If you're new to Unity and programming, and you're not sure how to package data, this could be a good lesson in doing so. The extension class is fantastic, I use it practically everywhere I go. Make sure you hold on to that if you don't already have one like it. With the point targeting script removed, you could continuously send the position of a target and really track it. Read its velocity or add code for acceleration. I hope you find uses for it. I believe in you. If you did find any of this helpful in any way, please consider subscribing for more videos like this one. I don't upload often since I work a full-time job and I'm really just busy otherwise, but I'm always looking for interesting topics to make a video of. In the description down below, you will find links to this project on GitHub, additional reading material, and a link to my other trajectory video if you are looking for a more direct approach.